Hello and welcome back to the last unit of this week. We would like to talk about the benefits of these notation standards. What do they do for us? What is good? And uh, we have not talked about these standards. We have talked about uh, this notation manual in the last unit and the different ways of visualizing charts and tables, these templates. And now it's about a year ago, a little bit more, SAP asked us whether we are willing to think about benefits. And they asked us to write a paper about this. This paper has been published a year ago or so notation standards and business communication and their practical benefits. It's a 10, 15 page paper. You're uh, we are happy if you would like to download it. And the question was, what is really helpful in business reporting compared to people? What are the benefits in geographic analysis? People using maps. What is the benefit of having standards and maps? North is up, rivers are blue, roads are red. You see it uh, on these examples. And it's obvious that clear rules for designing maps are very helpful for the user using the same scale, using the same colors for the same meaning. And coming back to music, Leonard Bernstein, famous not only for his music in, in West Side Story, when you see him, what is doing here? He is writing the music. He is the sender. And what do the others do? What is the orchestra doing? The orchestra is now some, some type of receiver. And what is the communication tool in between? What is the link between sender and receiver. And this is sheet music. The transfer medium is sheet music. And this is what we have to look for when we have here the, the controller, the fan financial analyst, the writer of any report, and here's the reader, the audience, the receiver. Do we have this link in between like sheet music? We don't have it yet, but this is the goal of our standards. Let's have a look at the process of sender and receiver now in the world of business communication. The IT people, they develop the systems, they provide data, and then the result are these statistics, these dashboards, more or less coming directly from IT dashboards. And now the controllers, the people in controlling, the people in financial analysis and other departments, take these dashboards, analyze them and create messages. Now from a simple dashboard which has been produced automatically, we come to Reports. Reports contain messages. Reports tell a story. Reports are not only statistics. Reports really transport a story. And what does now management do? Management gets these reports, evalu evaluates the messages, and makes good decisions, hopefully. This is the process where we are in. The, the more or less statistical dashboards without a message and then the reports and hopefully at the end the good decision. And in this process between IT, controlling and management, where are the benefits? IT develops the system, the systems controlling, analyzes the data and management evaluates the messages and, and makes the decisions. So we have three different, let's say, called areas of benefits. First is improved quality. It's 
obvious that if we have really designed optimal, the best templates for different applications, then the IT people can use them, can use them and build perfect systems. The controllers take these templates and can use them in their reports. And of course, the quality of decisions relies on the quality of these reports and templates. So it's obvious that quality is improving in all three areas. Next thing is reaction time. Does or do standards really help us to react faster? Of course, I mean, IT has a shorter development time because it's clear what they have to do. It's clear what, how the dashboards have to look like. The controllers in writing and producing the reports have clear concepts. It's much easier for them. And of course, it's easier for top management and all levels of management to understand these reports quicker, faster, if they're using the same language. I mean, just think of a piano player if uh, Mozart and Beethoven and Tchaikovsky would use a different language. It's impossible for him or her to play this piece because he or she doesn't know the notation. And the last one is maybe the most important one. It's also reducing the cost. I'm not talking about the cost of time use, but I mean the cost in general for developing different types of systems, for developing a vast majority of different um, report types and pages and different types of charts. And of course, it's a clear, cl clear result that if management is able to find better decision that this will reduce costs. So in all fields, we have quite significant benefits, but at the end, the whole project will cost us investment. Of course, we don't get it for free. We have to make our own notation concept, which takes time, has to be defined, spread out, trained. We have to have management supporting this, and we have a project spreading out this in a worldwide basis of a large organization. Sometimes there are hundreds of countries and affiliates being touched. And the last thing is, of course, uh, we need software. Without proper software, we are not able to fulfill this. The software tools, some of them are already and more are coming to be able to do this, is the third pillar we rely on. It's concept, it's management and, and project work, and it's the proper for software. Just look at one example um, of people involved in this business. This is Philips and Eindhoven, a, a large international organization, and we have asked the head of reporting what do you think about what we have been doing there? Because we made a, a we made a training concept for them. We were engaged in the writing of their uh, of their notation manual. And he says, IBCS has been a great accelerator for us to take our business insights to the next level. And even the CFO, uh, he has shown us a picture of the CFO pointing on this poster of the concept and saying, well, this is where Philips is going to go worldwide in the next years. And so, to, to wrap it up, we feel that the standards of IBCS are helpful for every type of business communication, let it be PowerPoint or dashboards. And we have, the last week, the last five units, we have talked about the semantic issues. It's probably the most, the, the newer part of the IBCS areas. But in next week, we have another five units. We will talk about structure, about messages in detail, about perceptual rules, and other aspects of these international business communication standards. We are hoping and we hope that you will come back next week to see the other details of IBCS.